And most of all, many thanks to the hosts and the organizers of this beautiful event, to inviting me here. I say this because of all of you beautiful people gathered here in our common cause to fight for children's rights. Now, what do I click? So you can see the title of my presentation. I think I'm actually the only one who left uh, the name of his country in the title, so now I feel like I'm some kind of Euro song con contest or something like that. Uh, you can read it, of course, but I will uh, mainly focus on the children in street situations because of some recent developments in my country that I would like to tell you uh, more about. Now, considering some terminology, uh, actually on children in street situations and in the state of extreme poverty, there are no definitions of these terms as far as laws in, of the Republic of Serbia are concerned. First mentioning, as you can see, is in unfortunately still draft version on the law on children's rights and protector of children's rights. I uh, hope so, we very much hope that this soon will be enforced and become a law and a, a part of a Serbian legal system. So it does mention this text, uh, children in streets as persons that should have specific protection, and it defines children from a socially unstimulating environment. Now there is a special section of this law to be uh, called standard of living of the child and family. So it said there that a child has the right to a standard of living that corresponds to his or her physical, mental, spiritual, moral, and social development. There are more provisions that are saying something uh, more about responsibility, primarily responsibility of the parents to provide that right, right of the standard of living to their children. And of course, obligations from the state and public authorities to provide support to parents so they can fulfill their, their obligations as parents. And of course, some of the common uh, social care proverbs, uh, provisions about uh, parents and children, families, of course, who are in uh, so-called unfavorable social positions and the necessities that public authorities are ought to provide them. Oops, I went far away. Uh, there is another, uh, for this introduction, uh, for me, important document. It's called Strategy for the Prevention and Protection of Children from Violence for the period from 2020 to 2023. Uh, that document states that there is no systematic and complete record of children whose life and work is connected to the street. Also, that there is insufficient understanding of the causes of child begging. You know, when we ask mostly Roma children, why are they on the streets, beg? They tell us it's because of their poverty, because they need money. We often know that that isn't the true reason. It's because they're forced, quite often by their parents, and sometimes by organized criminal groups. So category of Roma children is singled out because they are at the greatest risk of becoming involved in begging. They're the most marginalized group due to extreme poverty. As we know, Roma poverty is 10 times higher than the majority population. Now, before I begin uh, with the central part of my speech, I would like to tell you of an event that happened in the year 2018 in my country, just to get the idea and the picture of how much has happened since then, how much we developed in this area. Now, in that year, a uh, ministry that is in charge for social affairs brought a so-called work order. That's a mandatory document issued to all centers for social work. Now, centers for social work are uh, authorities, guardianship authorities in Serbia. I guess you have similar kind of authorities and institutions in your countries. And there is one center in each municipality. So they were ordered to remove, in each discovered case, to remove children from the streets, to separate children from their parents, to initiate 
proceedings in front of the court to deprive those parents of their parental rights and at the end to press criminal charges against those parents. But fortunately, Protector of Citizens reacted that time and gave an opinion and it said, among other things, that this document is quite the opposite to the Convention on the Rights of the Child, that it vastly lowers the already established level of children's rights, realization of children's rights in the Republic of Serbia, and lastly, that it guides centers for social work to do something which is illegal. Besides that opinion, Ombudsman also gave some recommendations, and few of them are implemented in this document that I want to tell you more about. So on the 25th of May, 2022, last year, in order to apply general comment number 21 of the Committee on the Rights of the Child, these responsible authorities, so Ministry for Family Care and Demographics, Ministry for Labor, Employment and Social Issues, Ministry of Internal Affairs, Public Prosecutor's Office, and the City of Belgrade, in accordance with these relevant regulations, I won't read them all, but as you can see there in the first place we have family law, but also criminal law, actually law and criminal procedure, etc. They passed this plan for the protection of children in street situations from violence, neglect, and exploitation. Now, there are two goals of this plan. To secure fast and efficient intersectoral cooperation in protecting children in street situations that might be at risk to become victims of violence, neglect, and abuse. To provide help, support, and to find alternatives for children in street situations dependency from the street. Now, we have some firm definitions this time. Of course, in the first place, it's a definition of a child or children in street situations. So those are children up to 18 years whose life and or work depends on the street, where they reside alone with peers or family. Then children that occasionally live and or work in the street. Children that doesn't live and work in the street, but spend most of their time there along with peers, brothers and sisters, and the rest of the family. Now, according to the general comment number 21, we differ useful children work and harmful children work. And actually, harmful children work, in most cases, is dangerous children work. It actually represents the abuse of child labor. For example, useful child, child, children work is uh, earning pocket money during the summer holidays, selling lemonade on the street like in American movies, or something like that. But dangerous children work in the streets is any kind of work in the streets that is harmful for children's health, security, and morality, which is determined based on child's age, type of activity, and circumstances around it. Now, according to age, that is every type of work involving children age seven and younger, without appropriate supervision for children up to 14 years old, and work during the night for all children. About circumstances, it is any work activity happening during extreme weather conditions. You can imagine which one of those. Or wearing inappropriate clothes, or in some unsafe surroundings like high altitudes, for example. Now, the type of work is any activity that represents danger for child security, health, well-being, morality, and education, such as working with dangerous materials, and such is, of course, such is beggings. Now, a little more of the procedure, which I find most important. Now, which are the competent authorities responsible, responsible for implementation? Those are already mentioned, I'll explain to you their role. Centers for social work, police departments, public prosecutor's office, and as it's stated in the plan itself, every other authority that has legal obligation or are interested in solving problems of children in street situations, such as healthcare facilities, school and other educational institutions, and of course, non-governmental organizations. Now let's say something more about each of them. So, mainly in accordance with an estimated child's best interest and with his or hers active participation, one of two ruling principles of the convention, and in partnership with relevant subjects, 
Centers will provide continuous help and support to children in three situations by implementing measures and services from its jurisdiction, but also to parents or other guardians, that, so that they could, within their capabilities and material possibilities, secure living conditions necessary for the optimal development of the child. Of course, when we are talking about children without parental care, they will secure guardianship and, if must, and always actually, alternative child care. Again, in accordance with the estimate of child's best interest and with his or hers participation. Now, they will also take measures of criminal or civil liability against parents for whom it is determined to misuse parental rights, for example, forcing children to do dangerous work in the streets. And now, a contrary to the infamous event I, was, I told you about earlier, this is important sentence. So during parental capabilities assessment, sole fact that child or family work or live in the streets cannot be a reason for deprivation of parental rights or providing alternative care for a child. Now, as far as police departments in question, they, of course, identify places, number of children, age of children, and also the presence of adults in their near side to check if those persons are using children, exploiting them, actually, to commit crimes or offenses. So if those facts indicate that something, something is suspicion, suspicious in that matter, then measures and actions to protect the, will, the victim will be undertaken, but also to identify, find, and arrest the perpetrator. Everything other in order to file a criminal complaint. Uh, when we have uh, cases of uh, some kind of human trafficking crime, exploiting children for begging, for example, then uh, police must inform so-called Center for the Protection of Human Trafficking Victims, also one important body, very important linked link in, in, in this process. And last, in each case when there is a suspicion that the child is a victim of abandon, abandonment or abuse, or some other crime from the group of crimes that are called in our criminal law crimes against marriage and family, so-called law on preventing domestic violence will be primarily applied. Next one are, of course, public prosecutor's offices. We have basic and higher offices in our country. They are, as usual, acting on filed criminal complaints, this time in the cases of exploiting and abusing children. They initiate criminal procedure, they press charges, they file complaints. Uh, also, very much is important, the, uh, very, of very importance is the role of groups for coordination and cooperation. They exist at every basic public prosecutor office to work on these cases. Why is it important? Because the members of these groups, besides representatives of the public prosecutor office, are members of police, social care, health care, educational institutions, and non-governmental organizations. Also, uh, uh, fully cooperation is expected between public and highly, uh, high, uh, higher prosecutor's offices and the already mentioned Center for Victims for the Protection of Human Trafficking in the cases of human trafficking. Now, uh, of much importance is, in my opinion, those, as you can see, joint measures and activities. So, in order to apply this plan, Together, directors of social service, social work centers, managers of police departments, representatives of public prosecutor offices, organize meetings with representatives of competent authorities, institutions, and NGOs in all cities and other municipalities in the Republic of Serbia. They analyze current situation. They establish, are there any children in the street in concrete towns, cities, and smaller places also? If that is established, plan of activities aimed to protect children will be made. It will include goal, stakeholders, persons in charge of coordination, time frame, area in which it will be conducted, specific measures, actions, more deadlines, etc. Now, the key to success is to create a large network. So all those, from all those stakeholders involved, members, representatives, 
should be connected. Those lists of contacts are available at the uh, uh, ministries that are in charge, the ones that I have already mentioned at the beginning. So, near the end, I've singled out the city of Belgrade because it's by far the largest city in Serbia. There is some estimated number of about 500 children in the streets of Belgrade right now as we speak. But I'm afraid that that number is much higher. So, except those activities I forementioned, authorities of the city of Belgrade, not to name them now, are carrying out next following activities. So, media promotion of the Shelter for Children of Belgrade, especially their daycare services, and also promotional material distribution so that children in the street situation can get familiar with ways of realization and protection of their rights. Then it's the training of the representatives of authorities and institutions that may come into contact or are dealing with ch those children. Workshops with the children themselves and other users, of course, of the daycare. And sometimes occasional tours and installation of mobile encounters in the places where children in the street situations are for the purpose of establishing contacts and gaining trust. Sometimes on the important dates such as 12th of April, that's the International Day of the Children in the Street situ Situation. Of course, a very important one is harmonization of all relevant regulations with the general comment number 21. This uh, is uh, open to other authorities to approach to this document. And just to conclude, I know, I think, in my opinion, this document has its faults. I think that some of, author of authorities are not involved enough. They're not mandatory involved in this, in this process. And there should be, like educational institutions, for example. We have some different terminology about children as they are treated in civil, actually family law and in criminal law. I guess you have the same thing in your countries. But I think it's one big step, considering the story I told you five minutes earlier, one big step forward realization and protection of the rights of the children in the street situations. Thank you very much. Kirsten Vesepin.